are we really seeing an uptick in sexual harassment and rape? And if so, why is it happening and what can be done to address it? Let's go ahead and talk with our uh, London Bureau, from our London Bureau, a journalist, blogger and author, Sonny Hundall. The, he also wrote a book called India Dishonored, Behind a Nation's War on Women. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on Connect the World. You know, everyone is looking at the situation and they simply want to know why, because India is also known as a place that reveres women. I lived there for five years. You really have a duality going on. What is it all about? There is, that's true. I think there is a duality in India. You know, as, as you said, they revere women. There's also women uh, gods. There's this idea that women are put on a pedestal, but I kind of think that's part of the problem because Indian culture says that we are putting women on a pedestal. And for me, and when I wrote the book, I found that actually that's part of the problem because we put women on a pedestal, that also means we are trying to control them and say, this is how they should behave. And part of the problem in India is that because women are put into such tight roles, I mean, I'm not saying that it goes for everyone, but for so many, that they don't have enough independence there and as a result of that you have these cases where you know m men kind of a lot of men see women as if, if they're traveling by themselves doing this and that they kind of impure and they can do whatever they want with those women because you know they're outside the boundaries of what they think those women should do they're, they're thinking that these women are loose, they're morally corrupt, we can do whatever we, we please with them. Uh, let me discuss this. I know we've been focused on these egregious attacks, the, the gang rapes, uh, but there is a general feeling in some cities of worry about sexual harassment of all kinds of types. Uh, I lived in India for nearly five years working as a correspondent for CNN, and, and I'd like to address that. Let me give you a, a quick example here, something that happened to me, and I'm pointing it out uh, because it was caught on tape during a live show. Let Let's go ahead and, and show you the tape of what happened. This is during the Mumbai attack in 2008 at the Taj Mahal uh, Tower. Basically what happened in that, everyone is familiar with this, this terrible attack, um, and what happened there uh, was basically that, look, the, all these men surrounded me as I was doing a live report. And the minute that the light went out, the minute that the light went out, suddenly I was groped, I was grabbed, I was, my clothes were torn. Uh, I literally had to fight to get out of that group. And so let's go ahead and look at this tape so that you can see what I'm, what I'm talking about. This was live on television. Barely. I gotta get out of here. Okay. So tell me. Yes. Tell her why should we are there. So you hear me, me yelling there. Why I point that out is because there was a terrorist attack happening right behind us. People were literally being slaughtered inside of that hotel. And yet, outside, there was this, this sort of anger growing. And suddenly, it got turned on me as a woman. And certainly, I was uh, really kind of surprised by it. I wasn't scared. I was surprised um, uh, by it. Why do you think that some of this goes on on a daily basis where women riding the train, women riding the bus, they have to deal with being touched and groped on a daily basis. Well, I mean, I've lived in India too, and I think you're right in saying that there is a strong, I mean, there is a strong culture in India, I think, of what they call Eve teasing. And unfortunately, in a lot of cities, this happens to a lot of women who are traveling around, just Indian women traveling around, not just tourists, but, you know, everyone where, they're just groped, they're harassed, uh, they, you know, and I think that there is a problem there where men don't understand the boundaries and don't understand the difference between, you know, uh, or don't at least respect women's boundaries uh, because they're traveling around, they're doing this and they're doing that. And to me, it's a, a part of a growing problem in India whereby men are coming over from villages, they're coming to cities where they don't really understand the norms of more cosmopolitan cities. They don't really understand the, the moral boundaries there. They've, they've not, not really interacted with women properly all their lives because Indian culture is very conservative. And they're sort of, and they're single too because India has a huge sex selection problem whereby there's far more men than there are women. So I think those factors have come together now increasingly in India. And, and so what's happening is you see an upsurge in rape. You're seeing an upsurge in trafficking. There's a lot of growing amount of women complaining about harassment, sexual harassment, and, you know, brides being burned. So 
I mean, the culture of violence against women in India is getting progressively worse. And it's actually getting worse even as India becomes more developed and India becomes richer. And that, to me, is the biggest problem that the country faces right now. I think you pointed a really good point, it, because if you're saying it's getting worse, some of that seems to be in reaction to that traditional things are changing, traditional values are changing. Women are becoming much more powerful. I want to bring this fact in. The number of reported rapes in Mumbai is re increasing, uh, just as you said there, but how does it compare to other cities around the world? You, know, you don't want to paint all Indian men uh, as, as, as rapists or people who, I mean, we've met so many people. There's a billion people in the country. Um, there are wonderful, wonderful people wonderful men uh, that I have met while there as well. But look at this official data. In Mumbai last year, there were 232 reported cases of rape. This is in a city of 20.5 million people. While in New Delhi, with a population of about 20.4 million people, there were 585 reported rape cases. Now, let's compare all that to New York City, a city with about 8 million. There is no city comparison uh, because, you know, with the number of people in India, you're not going to get the exact comparison. But a very large uh, city, most populous in the U.S., in 2012, there were 1,058 cases of rapes reported to authorities there. When you look at that comparison, is what is happening in India, are they being sort of um, unfairly looked at uh, as a place where this is a real and growing problem? No, I don't think that's true. And I'll tell you why, because India has a real problem with reporting of rape. And so there is a moral problem whereby there's a lot of victim blaming and women who report rape are almost shamed into it and sort of, you know, they feel like so much shame that a lot of them don't report rape. So the levels of reporting are very low in India. And then secondly, the police system is so corrupt that actually the level of uh, report convictions and the, the... So, for example, Delhi, earlier this year, there was a case of a girl being murdered and raped, and then it came out that... Uh, raped and murdered, and it came out that the police had tried to pay off the father of the family because they didn't want to report the case. So they thought, you know, give him 2,000 rupees and maybe you won't report it. And there's been several other cases where the police have just not reported the case. There was last year in Patiala, there was a girl who committed suicide and said that the police did not listen to me. So there is a real problem Sunny, in India. And let me just stop you there, because Sunny, we've also heard of cases where people go to report rape and the police actually take advantage of that woman. We have to stop it here. Thank exactly. you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Sunny Handal.